Your Excellency, Minister of Education of Jordan, distinguished ministers and representatives of education from the Arab world, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to be here and the honor of closing this panel with very interesting remarks that I'll try to address uh, within my speech and hopefully will clear some of the questions that along the forum people will answer uh, with this sharing mechanism of being together in such an, an important event. Um, talking a little bit about our company, very briefly, we are a global company providing global solutions for education within primary and secondary school around the world. Uh, we've been doing projects in more than 40 countries uh, with different business models, uh, directly with governments, with local partners, with a chain of more than 200 partners across uh, 30 countries. And today, working with uh, companies like Intel and Microsoft, we've been leading uh, the market in terms of classmate PC adoption around the world, and we have more than 5 million students uh, using our solutions. Within the work we've been doing, uh, one of the reflections um, that we're doing uh, right now, and based on uh, some of the discussions in forums like this one, that actually started earlier um, at the Education World Forum, uh, we started uh, bringing a picture of how people think about education, what is happening now, what is the introduction of technology bringing to the whole system. And one of the things that uh, you heard from some of the questions and doubts and, and some of the remarks today in this panel and also yesterday, uh, we believe that uh, a picture like this one that I have on my, my slide uh, shows you how we feel that the world is evolving in terms of this education need for reform. And uh, this tells you that uh, uh, the world of education is under construction. But one of the powers of being here and sharing and collaborating with, with uh, a lot of people from around the world is having the chance of looking at this picture, picking your color, and decide how can you contribute to change and enhance the landscape of education by painting the world the way you want. So that's the freedom that people have in terms of collaborating and exchanging uh, their points of view on how to help advancing the system because we're helping people, we're advancing society. So this is one of the work uh, that we were, are doing today um, in some of the activities and projects that we are running uh, across the world. Recently, two weeks ago, The Economist came with this cover page and uh, we, we talked about jobs today, we heard about jobs yesterday, and this is a discussion of how are education systems preparing people for the jobs that we have now or the ones that we will create in the future. And, um, this uh, has a different landscape depending on the country and region that you're talking about. Uh, but one of the, the focus here, and I'd like to bring this to your attention, uh, we work uh, intensively in regions like Latin America, also Africa and Europe uh, for sure. Um, what we've been seeing in many of these countries is uh, people are looking from some of the objectives that we faced, for instance, in Europe uh, during the 80s and 90s. This social notion that uh, people had to go to college to have a decent way of life and becoming an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer would be the way for them to secure a job and skills for that uh, ongoing challenge of the, the work life. What we see in some of those countries today, and particularly when you hear about this financial crisis, is uh, that's no longer enough. And many of those systems fail to maintain the professional vocational training um, options for students to navigate and decide where to go to get educated. So today this represents that within industry we're having challenges in many countries where we actually don't have people prepared for the jobs that are opened in many of these landscapes. So hopefully reviewing and looking at systems uh, when people plan the development uh, of their education system we would take this into account. We heard from Oman, for instance, the idea of a Vision 2020 that really pushes the programs that will be run in the country to develop their society and the, through their education system. 
one of the ideas around this mismatch between uh, companies and how the education system is preparing people for uh, their work life is really what kind of skills are we talking about? What kind of things changed in the way we work? And one of the angles is technology. Technology is really bringing different aspects in the way we work, the way we collaborate and share. Uh, this idea of e-government is something that in businesses started earlier and digital systems are abundant and a uh, basic literacy component for people to have a job. Uh, also this idea of collaboration, the idea of sharing some uh, of the knowledge that people acquire within their work life uh, and the tools needed for that really change the landscape of how should the education system prepare people for work. And this is one of the factors that we're seeing in many of the development processes. Thinking about skills and one of the efforts that uh, we're doing as well, uh, we joined this organization of Partnership for 21st Century Learning um, it's a group that's really focusing on key components of this life with technology, this new way of learning and how to integrate this. Uh, because we also believe, as was said in the panel, that uh, we ch are changing the mechanisms. The tools are different, but the objectives of learning and developing people for life are the same. Uh, but the idea here is how do we prepare systems for new components? And this idea of 21st century skills focuses on four key components. Uh, these components really uh, can be embraced within the design of these education systems. Is technology included? Of course it is. It may be in some cases more or less depending on the global objectives of the education system. Again, we like to paint pictures, so one of the ways of really enhancing the focus on this is having a universal language where people focus on these four components. This is the way for us to bring this concept to children. This is the way to bring this concept very easily to teachers. And this is uh, one of the focus of the development projects that we're running in several countries. We heard about uh, illiteracy uh, concern in Tunisia, uh, the question about how ICT enhances the education outcomes. Uh, uh, this is a question from, from Iraq, and also the Arab League mentioned this. So I think this is a, a common discussion that uh, it's not particular for a country or a region, this is global. This is something that people are questioning today. Do we have the right systems to really bring value to the education and society? One of the focus when you talk about technology, and we actually are a company that um, started our work within the hardware front, so uh, becoming known for developing our own uh, IT devices for students, um, I think we should uh, shift a little bit our focus to the global concept of what we're trying to achieve. So why are we investing in ICT and how are we investing in these ICT projects? Uh, I think that one of the risks that we're, we're seeing across the globe is the temptation of solving education problems by bringing devices to students. And my focus here, as was said by many people here in the panel and yesterday as well, is it's not enough. You need to bring something else. Uh, so I'd like to just briefly go step by step very simply on some of the key uh, topics of these projects. So one of the focus is an integrated system. And that starts with what we call a project design. So how do we properly design what we are aiming for? What kind of objectives do we have in our education system? That should be our main focus for investment. Uh, Vision 2020 from Oman again. The idea of having a higher level range of objectives that guide our planning, guide our policy making. We heard about law reform. Maybe we should change some of the laws we have within the education system to change the way we manage teachers, change the way we measure results, change the way we see the impact going to the working labor force. So project design for us is the starting point to really know what we're trying to achieve within these investments. ICT devices and infrastructure. Temptation, yes, to buy the latest gadget, to be able to provide this to students, to modernize the system. Uh, again, one of the risk factors we're seeing across the globe is that people rely too much on the device itself to change the system. It will not. 
and in some cases it will bring some of the dangers of uh, a very rapid deployment process. So the idea of devices, infrastructure, networking, connectivity, those are all important factors, but they need to be put in place within the right, right frame of this project design. Uh, we, going forward in terms of the development of our project, uh, thinking back on how to actually plan, and I'll go rapidly uh, across these topics, when you think about uh, moving people, uh, how do we engage teachers? At what pace should teachers be embracing technology? How should they be prepared? We heard about the role of the teacher, not only as a lecturer, also as a consultant and also as a helper or a tutor. So what's this new role of a teacher? How should a teacher really behave and engage with students? Uh, we have countries where teacher unions are a key component that blocks some of these investments. So we need to convince them and empower them for this transition of education projects. How do we manage families? How do parents know how will their kids learn with these new devices, with technology around them? Will this be a distraction? Will this bring a superficial level of knowledge because of the way people learn on the internet? Or will this really bring different skills that they had no access without using those tools? Content and applications. We heard from Tunisia, the need for digital content. It's not only in the Arab world, this is global. And then you need to distinguish uh, between free content, readily available across the internet, curriculum-based content, which is designed to match the systems within ministries of education. There are global companies, and you have some examples here of people that actually can guide this process. Applications, and more than applications, application platforms. So what kind of systems do we have that allow us to get results? to know what students are achieving, to track teachers' progression in terms of using ICT. Uh, do we have the right platforms for collaboration to share the experience we have in all these projects around the world? So this is evolving as well, and it's a key component. Deployment and, lo and logistics. It's not enough for me to bring devices into this room and make sure that you all get one of these devices. And imagine students. This is a very complex process. And in some countries, a unique logistics challenge that we saw in many, many countries that deployed uh, a number of uh, units of these, these solutions. <laughs> services. The broad range of services, from repairing devices to making sure that we keep on feeding the training processes, having this comprehensive view on a global project for education. So the focus here is when we decide to invest and we bring uh, this idea of procuring devices, my message to you is look for all these components and think about your first responsibility of designing your projects and focusing on your objectives. It still is the most, most important. Then you'll find the right solutions. There's a broad range of solutions for this. The topic of a project in education is there is an upfront heavy investment to bring technology into education, but it doesn't stop. The first year won't solve all the problems. So one of the focus is, what's my own going costs to maintain the system up and running? And for this, we focus on a message that is the total cost of ownership. How can you allocate budget for next year's cycle to continue supporting your ICT investments in education? How will you look for funds that will allow you to train teachers again to procure more content, procure more devices, maintain the system running. So this is the responsibility that education leaders face around the world. And this is the exchange that companies like ours and others here in the room can bring you experience from other projects and make sure that you also have your leadership within the projects you're running. So these are basically my answers within the time we have. Uh, very glad to be here and thank you for the organization for inviting us and let's hope we have a good Congress.